we will be seeing Ephesus, the best well-preserved ancient city in the entire country. So you should have high expectations with the site, not with the tour guide. <laughs> and Ephesus today has a lot to offer us in terms of antiquity. We'll be seeing ruins, reconstructions, Greek and Roman. And yet you're in Turkey, right? So after seeing something Greek and Roman in Turkey, then you're going to see something 100% real Turkish. Something we Turks are known for. Well, okay, traditionally and historically, Turks, we are known as fine quality carpet makers. So you're going to enjoy a carpet demonstration today, uh, after Ephesus. And that will be in the countryside, not in a corner shop in downtown. So we'll be going to the heart of this art, where you're going to see, in fact, the kitchen of this art. And I believe it's going to be a memorable experience. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Are you having a good tour? Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. You've done a good job uh, about what we're doing here. It's a co-op and we're working uh, with 25 different villages in these surrounding areas. We teach these ladies how to weave carpets in 12 months and we also teach for the silk weavers how to get silk from the cocoons, which is basically what I would like to start with, if it's fine for everybody. Um, after graduating from this course, the ladies are going home and they weave at home with everything they need and the silk weavers can have this sort of device at home to supply with their own silk and uh, the yarn that they're looking for to weave those carpets, finish those samples and bring those pieces to us. All right, this is the chain that we have between our girls and the establishment. We used to have ladies in the ages of 20s. Now we're in the 30s, close to 40s, which is not really good. That means young, younger generations are not getting involved in this uh, art. I don't know if you're right about uh, this art before coming, this works of art. This is what I would like to give a little bit of information and details about this beautiful part of our culture. And like you're doing, you can take all the pictures and videos. If some of you would like to try to get silk or weave carpets later on, you're more than welcome. If you do it right, maybe you can stay 12 months to finish the course. So I want everybody to see, so try to come a little bit closer to the lady. And I'd like to show you how everything starts, which is basically a little cocoon like this. And as you probably see it, the color of the cocoon is white. Our natural color of silk is white. In some other countries, you can get sort of a gold color. To get to this point, we need 45 days approximately. And mulberry trees is what we need to have for those little worms to eat the leaves, grow in 35 up to 40 days, up to nine centimeters, and start to take out of their mouth saliva and sticky substance around their bodies. In 10 more days, we're gonna have the cocoon ready. And I want you to listen to something. Mm -hmm. She's inside. Unfortunately, to get silk, I have to keep that worm inside with hot steam shock. We don't kill them all, otherwise we have no more coming. It's a 60 to 40%. By the time you're done with this, now comes the moment where I have to get the thread. I'm gonna show you what would it happen if I use none of this. I'm fine an end. I try to pull. I'm getting silk at the moment. But after a while, it breaks, you see? That's why, based on the Chinese way of doing this, I don't know if you read about it or if you've seen it, uh, these fell in the cup of tea of the queen in China. She was having a tea under a mulberry tree. Got wet, in a few minutes, started to unravel on its own. So Chinese discovered that hot water was the secret to get the threads from there. Since those days, we know that we're doing it like this, but we needed to add some motion to get that. So that's the wooden wheel that she's going to spin in a short while. And to grab those threads, we need a very simple tool, which is a brush like that, all right? So we're still doing it like this. People is asking me, where's the machines? There is machines, but on textile, not on carpets. Because every carpet has its own density of knots, so every carpet has its own, is gonna have its own uh, thickness on that particular yarn. So get your cameras ready. Just going to show you right now how to get silk from the cocoon. She goes one, two, three. Take a look at that. Wow. It's a very simple method, but still works very well. Some of these can be up to 
sometimes 10 times thinner than human hair. And if you ask me right now to get one kilogram of raw silk, I will need to find 6,000 cocoons. This is how light this material is. Now she's going to work with her hands because she's going to take the upper layer to clean that part. And all of those will become one thread. So remember the cup of tea. Here's your cup of tea. And here's the motion that she's going to create by attaching all those threads to the yarn she's already working with. Just be careful over there. And she's going to spin the wheel and the cocoons will be jumping around in the water. Oh. Mm. So this friction that she's creating with the water and the cocoon creates a steam that comes out of there. Oh, right. And all of those will become one thread. Really? That's right. And that thread is what I'm going to get in that yarn. How long she's going to do this every day if she wants to weave a silk carpet? She has to do this at least every day, five hours. Wow. So, to weave silk, it, it takes a lot of dedication, uh, a lot of time, good eyes, and good concentration. Some of them are wider, some of them are a little bit more transparent. I don't know if you can get to see from there. You start like that, and after five hours of keep doing this, you're gonna get something like this. Uh, for example, this one. If you see through the light, the there's a worm inside, all right? So that little worm inside, the outside part of the cocoon, and she took a few meters at the beginning, all of this is going to be provided to textile companies to mix with cotton and make, for example, shirts. You know when you buy a shirt, a silk and cotton? It's from that silk. What else do we use silk for? Do you have any idea, like generally talking? Parachutes. Parachutes, there you are, in the Second World War. The Romans could cut through marble mm -hmm. with silk. Yes. Um, for the worms, we can use it on cosmetic industry to make skin skincare creams for ladies. I don't know if you've heard about that. It's very good for the body, especially for your face. That's the secret for the beauty of the Turkish ladies. You know, every morning with a bug around their faces. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, and uh, in, the, in some countries, they're frightening them and they're eating them because of the protein levels. Uh, where? Crispy. Yeah, crispy. And I've, I've seen it in Thailand and they're, they're not as uh, bad as it looks. It's, it's very tasty actually. Um, everything's used in this. Nothing is wasted. What I want you to do before we go on, touch the seal here in the road, okay? Touch it please and see how rough that material is. One question, so if, if, if she's going through there and she's getting close to the end, can she attach the rest of them and keep going? Oh yeah, sure. Actually, when she realizes that she's coming to the end, she will add more. The ones that are already, like this one, she will take them out of there. And uh, to give you an estimate number, to make a carpet for the floor and to get only one color, you need at least 40 cocoons, oh. only for one color. Will she have to do the brushing again yeah. in order to add to it? That's right. It won't, it won't no. Hold, you need to get the brushing because, look, for example, this is silk, right? If right. I want to add this like that, it's all right. But if I want to add more, I need to use that brush to add it later on. <laughs> and the dyes that we use, by the way, on silk are chemical dyes nowadays. When you see a silk on silk carpet, that brightness, that sheen comes from the chemical dyes. If I want to use organic dyes for silk for that yarn that you're feeling right there, I need six months to have one color absorbed by that yarn. That's why chemicals got in the market, we'll replace them nowadays. Could you all understand it? Yeah. Do you have any sort of questions about this? How do they cut marble with silk? Good. Uh, by the time you get four of those out of the wheel and you spin them, you create one thicker line. Actually, with four is not enough. It should be six and eight of those. So to give you a number, is approximately 250 to 300 cocoons altogether. Mm -hmm. You get both hands, like a saw, on top of marble with water, and you go back and forth. Oh. Uh, obviously, you're not going to do this in 15, 20 minutes, yeah. but after a while, you'll start to cut through marble. Yeah. So it's a very, very rough material. We're going to see those in a short while. But the technique that we use as a country that we chose for more than 2,000 years is called double or Gordian knotting technique. All of our handmade carpets are done like that. By using two vertical threads instead of one, 
This part, the green one, is what Persians, the famous Persians, are doing, the single knotting technique. I don't want to say that we're better or they're better, but in Turkey we need more time to finish a carpet because we're dealing with two threads rather than one. Wool on wool, wool on cotton, and silk on silk are the three main categories. So now I'm going to show you with the help of these ladies to do that in slow motion. Every lady works with its own loom because if we mix tensions, the carpet can be uneven. All right, it's very important to keep that same lady from the beginning to the end. There's one front line and one back line of the vertical threads. So to do double knotting, yesterday, they pick one of the lines of the back, one of the front, and they go one, they go on top, they grab both, they go down, and they cut it off with the help of a blade. Oh, wow. They're going to do it again. If you cannot see from there, you can also come here. One, two, holding both. You go down and you cut it off with the help of a blade. So because I have done that. One and one last time. One, two, goes down and you trim it off with the help of a blade. The ladies are following a pattern. If you pay attention, there's something in front of them. They have to count one by one, dot by dot, dot uh, row by row. It's like cross stitching a little bit. You can commit mistakes, it's fair enough. If you realize the mistake is in the row you're doing, you can pull it and correct it with a proper color. If you realize the mistake was done in the previous lines, there's nothing you can do. The Guinness Books of Records has three mistakes in that carpet, just for you to understand. Oh, okay. But there's no perfect carpet, all right? So what we do later, we're going to cross what we call the wet. Like this. Look at that. This is the horizontal line of the structure of the carpet. And then we're going to have to beat the knots down with this iron comb. If the lady started to do that, and if I go and help her to do this, I'm going to have an uneven carpet again. So keeping the same tension is the key element to have a good result on the handmade carpet. Can you hold it up? I'm going to... And this is how they do it. The hotter the heat, the better it's going to be to make the knots tighter. That's why sometimes we motivate these ladies with a picture of their boyfriends or husbands. I'm telling you a little secret. The excess of fire is going to be trimmed off with a scissor like that. This is how we make the pile of that carpet right there. You can see 15, 20 ladies weaving, but only one will do the pounding and the trimming from the beginning to the end. That's cool. Could you all understand it? Mm -hmm. Do you have any sort of questions about everything we've seen so far? How long does it we, take? We feel cujins or pillows. We're not using for carpets anymore. Who said that? How long does it take to Thank you, ma'am. I was waiting for that question. This is going to be. Um, 325 double knots to one square inch. I just want you to picture it. Four by six, the size. This is 11 months of labor. Mm -hmm. Working every day for five hours, mm -hmm. and every 50 minutes they have to stop for 10 to stretch back shoulders, yeah. eyes, and fingers. Oh, yes. That's right. Do you get a massage for cutting? Right? Yeah. Do you yeah. do anything with all the threads? We fill cojins, pillows, but we don't use for carpets anymore. Okay. Yes, ma'am. You were going to ask me something. I'm Chinese, so right. I wonder how the secret came out from China to turn it yeah. into silk. Well, because it was supposed to be very secret. It was a very, you're, you're very process. right. <laughs> two, two monks from Asia Minor, what we call nowadays Turkey, traveled undercover to China and brought the secret and the cocoons into walking sticks. Oh. And then we started to do that in our land because our, our weather conditions and everything is perfect for the mulberries. Yeah, it was a secret, ma'am. You, you said very right. You kept it very well. Oh, I know Chinese people, they, they, they all fight. Them. No, no, yeah. they were trading silk for uh, the daughter of a, of a kingdom to as part of a dowry. There was no carpets, there were silk worms in, the, in that time. Imagine how valuable it was. So we're going to move forward, ladies and gentlemen, to take shoes off and walk on those carpets on bare feet. You're doing the proper thing to understand a handmade carpet, all right? Or if you just want to come on top with your shoes on, like we're all walking here, that somebody's also more than welcome. I have my assistant, our store manager, part of the designing team. These gentlemen, they speak English with different accents, okay? If 
them a hard time if you want to see something, if something cuts your eye, or if you want to ask something about the, the pattern, the material itself, we're here to help you. We're going to offer you something to drink. This is what we do in Turkey when we have guests. So I like to treat it like we treat ourselves here at home. For wine lovers, we do have Sauvignon Blanc and Cabernet Sauvignon from the area, and tea, apple tea, okay? This is organic apple tea. What Serve wine? And it's wine. Petersburg, and the carpet dates from 500 BC. It's double knotted. Since those days, we know that we've been weaving carpets with the technique that I just showed you, and since those days, we've been developing designs. The designs are either tribal, floral, or modern. These are the three main categories. And then we have award winners, one of the kinds that we're going to see in a short while. If you take a quick look at the ones hanging on the wall for two minutes, can you please tell me, this carpet to me, Alex, is the Turkish carpet. Which one would you choose? Which, which talks to you? This one. Why? It's very intricate, you're right. But why this one and why not this one, man, for example? It's richer. It's the color. It's richer. And there's one more element that a lot of carpets have. That if you see in almost every carpet you will see, symmetrical lines and flowers. When you look at all these carpets, they all have flowers. And they all tell different stories. But everything started with what we call tribal designs. What looks like in North America, like the <laughs> southwestern carpets. I'm going to start with a carpet from the Mount Ararat, where the Noah's Ark was supposed to be. I don't know if you've heard about this region. We're using uh, goat's hair, angora, and uh, the dyes that we use are all organic. So if you live in a place with a lot of sun, and the sun comes through the glass, through the window, to your carpet, there's no problem of fading at all. Because if you treat the dyes in the proper way, they're not going to fade at all. And if you look at the fringes, the fridges are telling you story. The story behind that is the lady preparing herself for marriage prepares dowry pieces. And she's showing the community that she's about to marry somebody with the fringes braided like that. We're still keeping it in some small areas of the country. When you see those carpets with these ones on the side, it means the lady got married already. All right? This is wool, and this is how the carpet looks like. Look at the colors, look at the sheen. You're going to see saffron, you're going to see indigo, you're going to see pomegranate, you're going to see tobacco leaves. What do you like, no? So this is one of the concepts. You can touch and feel by the time the carpets are getting closer. Okay? I need you to be in touch with those carpets. I need you to feel those. There you are, man. You're doing the right thing. You can stand and walk on those on your bare feet. How many times are you going to come to Turkey? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have one more. Yo, yo, yo. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You do have uh, deers, you have the lotus flowers on top, more of the modern ones, like these ones. See, player tones.